you are single and you are having casual sex, then enjoy sex. Otherwise, just be celibate. Focus on the pleasure. You find that you cannot afford someone's sexual pleasures. There are things that are off limits, but there are things that you would love to experiment. You need to have boundaries about what sexual activities are off limits for you. Someone I choose for something casual cannot be the same person I would have chosen if I wanted something serious. There's a, if someone doesn't want you to show up at their place, girls, we are very fond of this. If you want a casual thingy, say I want a casual. If you are an adult and you're still having sex to give your husband or your boyfriend, then you know, even if I wasn't a child-free woman, I wouldn't want to have a child outside marriage. How did I make sure that I was practicing safe sex? Because there's also that. There are reasons as to why I decided to have sex. My safety came first. Sex is something that has always been available. Let's talk about body count. welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today um, this is a continuation of the two previous episode I've decided to make it a series so episode one and two is already out if you've not watched that you might have to start there so that you can catch up with you know uh, the whole story in that order Anyway, in today's episode, I'll be talking about sex during singlehood and dating. And when I talk about dating, I want you to know that I mean going out with, uh, in my case, men with the sole reason of um, looking for a good relationship. So I'm not talking about dating as in you are in a relationship. I am talking about the process of looking for a relationship whereby you go out with various people to get to know them and all that. And of course, singlehood. So I just want to take you guys with me in my journey throughout being single, dating and um, being in a relationship finally. I want to have coffee as I do this. But the guys, it's so cold out there. I even wanted to... Where is this? You guys know the season right now. It's raining. In fact, yesterday it drizzled the whole, whole day. Guys, I forgot to bring a teaspoon. So I'll be using the same, same spoon to get the sugar and to stir, please don't judge me. Mm. Perfect. So first of all, being single for me was a choice, by the way. I decided to take a break and just focus on self-growth. For me, being single during those three plus years uh, was, I saw it as a time of personal growth and freedom. So I really, really used that time to develop myself. But you know, there are people who can't be single, by the way, guys. I just want you to know that. I think I used to be that person. In fact, all through my life, the only time I have been single is that same time that I decided intentionally to be single. But there are people who anytime they are single, they just feel so lonely and they really crave companion. I totally understand. I just want you to know that it was a choice. However, when you are single and not uh, celibate, we all know guys, however much we don't want to talk about it, um, we all know that some people actually are that some people are actually sexually active even though they are single. That's a fact. When you're an adult, you simply decide whether or not you want to become celibate. And if you choose not to become celibate, no one is going to kick your ass because you had sex when you were single. Uh, sex is something that has always been available. Unfortunately, unfortunately, sex is something that's very, very available even to the single people. So let's talk about this openly. There are reasons as to why I decided to have sex once in a while even though I was single or even when I was single. My reasons were to experiment, to explore and also physical pleasure. Those were my reasons. Even though some people have sex when they're single to cope, it's a coping mechanism for them. You have to know that. And some people also just crave to emotionally connect with uh, someone else. But the latter were not my reasons. 
However, when you decide to have sex while you are single, it's important for you to know that there are risks. I knew there were so many risks of me having sex even as I was single. Yes, there are benefits. I mean, that's why I was having it. But then there are also risks. And actually, in my case, the risks were higher than the benefits. Even though during all that time, I truly, truly prioritized my safety before anything that I did. My safety came first in every situation. I wouldn't have put myself in a position where I knew here, Laura, I was going to either get pregnant, uh, contract an STI, get emotionally attracted to the other person, you know, because we are humans, we have emotions and all that. And a lot of times when you're having sex while you are single, you want to put your boundaries very, very straight. And uh, we'll be talking about boundaries a little bit later. Sometimes, even though you have boundaries, uh, what when I say manga, even though your heart knows what's right, your flesh wants what is wrong. And in that process, you may either be emotionally attracted to someone whom you are only, you know, having pleasure with and vice versa. If you're listening to me and you're having sex when you're single or just dating, you know, various guys, you need to know that you should prioritize your safety before pleasure. Because sometimes you get so deep into the pleasure, you forget about the safety and then you catch up with the risks later. Let's talk about safe sex. How did I make sure that I was practicing safe sex? Because there's also that. I have a very strict parent, you guys. You know, even if I wasn't a child-free woman, I wouldn't want to have a child outside marriage. That's one thing I wouldn't have uh, wanted to do. Marrying someone because in the middle of you two having pleasure, a child came in. Even in my personality, I'm just that person who is a one-man woman i am not a cheat typically i've ever cheated when i was in a relationship i've ever done that but typically i'm just not a cheat i'm not a typical cheat and therefore multiple partners at the same time for me is always a no and that's one of the ways that i practiced self sex when i was single you can have one partner and still get yourself into some weird situation but the risk just reduces so much or by so much by having at least one partner, you know. So, um, I have freedom. I can be with this partner today, tomorrow with the other partner. Uh, I mean, I'm safe, I'm, take, I'm safe, I'm taking care of myself, but my conscience would not just allow me. I'm just not that type of a person. If you are, well, good. Um, I truly have nothing against it, but personally, I'm just not that kind of a person. I prefer being with one person. If something happens and we fall out or, you know, I feel like they have served me uh, what I wanted and they are no longer, you know, of good service to me, then yeah. Or I have found someone better than them, then yes, because... I mean, I can't be single and also put up with something that's not up to my standard. That's just me. Another way I practiced uh, safe sex is by communicating very clearly. Guys, communication goes a long way when you're having sex with someone who is not your boyfriend nor your husband. Before you have sex, what's your STI status? What's your sexual history? Yeah. Also, when last did you have sex? Did you practice safe sex? Then there's also contraceptive options. You no, know, you have to communicate with whoever you're having sex with. Tell them, you know, uh, for me, I can never uh, use this contraceptive, so I'll need you to do this. And this, or I, this is the contraceptive that I'm using, um, just so you know. Or the man tells you, I am using contraceptive, so there's no need for you using uh, contraceptive, all that. For example, me, guys, I don't know why, but me and contraceptives, I just don't know. I just never use contraceptives a lot. Like compared to, I, I have so many friends, they use different con con contraceptives. But for me, I've just never used even one of those contraceptives that they are using. One is because I stayed for so long without being sexually active. There's a time when I really just wasn't 
sexually active and if i was it was once once in a while and even when i was sexually active it was still once once in a while for me sex has never been that thing that i need all the time so that once once i think that's why it was in my head that i really don't need uh to have a permanent contraceptive in my body for example that hiyo inaitwa nor plant ama ile yenye watu wanekanga pa then inachora kitu kama letter t hiyo i've never done that thing never ever but i remember there's a time <laughs> oh my god my childhood uh, friend jemima pushed me to go do a uh, three months injection injection uh, so you know those three months five years contraceptive injection i've done that two times I've done that two times and the last time I did it I was actually a, a a big adult I was a big adult and um it's because I was actually very sexually active with this guy because we were kind of dating to see where things will take us and uh I actually had some hope with the relationship I I had so much hope with the relationship so I decided um it's not me who will be taking these um emergency pills every single week so i'd rather the three months injection than that thingy like that uh taking those emergency pills they're just not my cup of tea so ended up using the three months injection it really messed up with my um menses my friend has had already warned me but that's the one i preferred as compared to the coil and the other one ia hapa but my point is whatever you are doing discuss the contraceptive options that fits that fits uh, that fit you you as a person or you too as the sexual partners you have to give whatever you guys are doing a name hata kama mtajiita two sex partners it's okay but rolling without knowing what you are in is a very dangerous case and i'll tell you my experience last but not least always go for checkups take that hiv test sti test blood test or blood screening everything regularly guys So what happens when you are single is that today you'll go on a date with this person and it won't work then you'll come back home and after a week someone else you meet someone else on Tinder and they ask you out on a date and because you are looking for love you are going to accept the date and then you go to the date and you find that you actually like this person and would love to have something good with them but then you are not celibate that's where the problem always come you know when you are celibate it's easier because you'll be like uh during the first date you'll ask someone are you okay being celibate until we get married you know but for us who are not celibate it's really tough because now uh you just have to look at who you want to have sex with and who you don't want to have sex with it sounds easy but it's not easy because How do you pick who you're having sex with and who you're not having sex with? But I'll tell you how personally I used to do that. There's the issue of setting expectations when you are single and sexually active. So many complexities when it comes to being single and sexually active. But one very important thing that I learned during that period is to always set your expectations right you know guys when you are in an actual relationship it's so easy to tell your boyfriend you know what me this is what i want i love gifts send be sending me flowers i love flowers i want you to be spoiling me cuz it's your boyfriend you can tell him whatever you want to but you're just single Guys, I'm so sorry for the background noise. My balcony door is actually open because I love the sun is coming in. My house has been so cold recently. I just want some warmth to come in this season. So, you know, you the only thing connecting you to this guy is having sex. It's pleasure. It's just like having fun. 
it's like me asking calling my friend and telling her you know hey cat can we go out on a uh, lunch satisfy your sexual pleasure if i want to have some pleasure i'll be like hey are you down for this <sighs> how do i pull this it's it's it, it's just pleasure you can't be entitled to those people however if you set your expectations, because that's crucial from the word go, then at least you guys have a way forward. You know what to do from there onwards. For me personally, I never see sex as something I want something in exchange to. Because again, when I'm having sex, I enjoy sex. Because again, I want that any time I'm having sex, I'm enjoying the sex. Therefore, I, I, I cannot be entitled to someone who's having sex with me because they're having sex with me. I don't know if you guys get it, but let me try and, exp and explain it even better. Oh, I'm sure there are people who still think this way. Even women, even men, they think that when you're having sex, the lady is offering the man the sex and not vice versa. But for me, anytime I have sex, First of all, I only have sex when I want it, you know, when I want it. That way, I won't think that I'm trying to give someone else sex. It's the only healthy way to have sex. If you are an adult and you're still having sex to give your husband or your boyfriend or a man sex, then you need to, dis you ne you need to do a lot of self-work in you. And I know you'll get there, honestly, because most of us have been there before. I'm going another route. My point was, try to set the expectations uh, from the word go. What are you... If you're someone who truly believes that you have to get something in, in exchange of sex, it's okay. Girl, I'm not even judging you. Just trust me. Um, if that's what you want... Just make sure that you set the expectations right and from the word go and you're communicating. Don't go and have sex and then ukimaliza ku have sex when you want to go wherever you're going to your house or the, the person having sex with you is now leaving. You're like, why is he not giving me anything? Communicate. If you want something in exchange of sex, I'm not for that, but I still don't judge you. And if you want someone you're having sex with to be g taking you for lunch, buying you gifts here and there, it's totally okay. And you, vice versa, I mean you also can gift him or something, depending on the relationship you have. You know, um, for you to have sex with someone, you honestly hold them in very high regards. And you are at least friends. You are at least friends. You at least like him. So there's no harm in you um, making it a bit, taking it a bit further in uh, the manner of you are having sex, but you can go for lunches uh, and so on. I did that. I did that. There's someone whom we were not in a relationship with, but you would have thought that we were having a very serious thing because we used to go out for coffee who will take me out for coffees, lunches, uh, road trips, and all that. Yet there was nothing. It was a very, very, very straightforward um, something, something. It was just a sexual relationship. If you want a casual thingy, say I want a casual. I don't want you to show up anywhere in, uh, in my house or at my place, in my home. I don't want. It's casual. Let's only meet when you're having sex and that's it. I don't want your lunches. I don't want anything. I don't want coffee. Strictly sex and that's it. And after you set this expectation, check in with this person to ensure you're on the same page. Because you can have, um, you can meet someone and you agree that uh, you just want to be sexual partners. But then for them, you are not on the same page. They might be thinking that you guys are dating. Nakumbe wewe, you know it's just something casual. Check with them to ensure that you are on the right page. Just ask them. You can ask them, um, hey, uh, I hope you're on the same page. It's just a sexual thingy. We are not like dating. You can date 
if you feel like it's time for you to date someone serious, you can go. Same to me. If I find someone serious, I can go right on the same page. Respect boundaries. If you want to enjoy whatever thing you guys are having, then you'll have to respect each other's boundaries. There's no way you are not even in a relationship and you're already arguing. What are, you, what are we arguing about and we are not even dating? Like there was this guy I was um, having a sexual relationship with. He used to not text a lot. So that alone told me a lot. So I used to never text him a lot to unless he wants to chat me i'm good because after all it was very very clear i just respected his boundaries that's the only way you can actually uh, enjoy that thing you are having that casual thing you are having otherwise i want you to imagine you're not even in a serious relationship with someone and you're already arguing about you didn't call me you didn't text me eh, me i don't have that energy in the first place that's why i have this casual thingy because I, I'm just not ready for that. I truly, um, I, I wanted to put the right energy where the energy is deserved. I don't think something casual deserves much energy like that. I'll only put that energy in someone I know I want to be with forever. If someone doesn't want you to show up at their place, girls, we are very fond of this, Tabia, because... Once, once I used to live in uh, some bed sitters, you guys know where I started life from, that first apartment I used to live uh, within, and most people in that apartment used to be students, and there used to be so much fights in that apartment, because girls used to come to uh, men's houses and cause drama, they found them, they find them with other girls, they fight, they shout, and that's why unona mtu anangusha mwingine kutoka kwa gorofa kwenda chini mtu anakufa why are you dying because of a man for god's sake why are you dying because of sex because of mjulus please <laughs> eh? men are worth because men are really amazing creatures and we ladies we need them but you can't be toxic just because of a man it's really not worth it mtu kama set boundaries zake respect them cuz if you set the same same boundaries you'll want to be respected and also if you put so much pressure in that casual thingy the sexual experience won't be enjoyable trust me if you put too much pressure uh, on each other that sexual exper experience will not be worth it, will not be enjoyable. You'll not enjoy something that you really, really, truly wanted to enjoy. Now, this is very, very important. Sometimes, despite putting very clear boundaries, um, it may just not work. Even after doing everything, uh, everything right, it just may not work. That casual thingy, it's just like it's just like uh, relationships. Sometimes you put in so much work, but it just never work. Yeah, even in singlehood, guys, the thing is it's still same same. Sometimes you just put in so much, but still it doesn't work, and it's okay. Don't uh, stress on it. Uh, I think for me, one failed really, really terribly because um, sometimes you find that you cannot just afford someone's sexual pleasures people have really weird it's very wrong to call someone else's sexual pleasures weird but uh for lack of a better word please allow me to use it sometimes people's sexual pleasures are really just weird and you can't afford them and it's okay and sometimes people may not be able to also um satisfy your sexual pleasures don't stress about it now let's talk about when to leave in such cases whereby you feel like it's not working when do you leave for me i left when uh there is lack of sexual satisfaction because you know in such a relationship it's usually sex is the main thing that's bringing you guys together like if we are to be very very honest you don't love that person per se you may like them but you may not love them so it's only that sexual connection that is the major thing that's holding you guys together so if there was no sexual satisfaction i would just this up if i felt unsafe 
with this individual i will psh, this up there's this guy um from tinder we met and he was 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 it from tinder really yeah yeah it was from tinder he was an amazing um person i thought a very good personality uh someone with a good reputation and all that uh so i thought and he was a bit likable so i was like okay um I wanted to know that at this time I had already I was already open to actually loving someone. So I was just trying a dating um to see if I may find someone suitable for me. So the guy invited me uh for drinks and dinner at his place later after the drinks. So we went out for drinks and all that and then when um I was having my dinner after the drinks he decided to take me to a different restaurant to have my dinner so I went to have my dinner in the other restaurant uh, this guy didn't have dinner because for him he just preferred <laughs> alcohol so he left me there when I was having my dinner this guy kiniacha nikikula dinner kumbe this guy went to the other pub because he was meeting his boyfriend so this guy turned out to be gay. It's a really really long story and I wouldn't honestly want to tarnish his name even though I won't give an identity of course which makes me not a bad person because you know however when I'm talking about this story I'd have to talk about some things that would really really sound terrible for him and for his sexuality. That's the only reason why I may not give the whole story. But long story short we went back to this man's house and of course i had already had dinner in the restaurant so uh the dinner was cancelled so we just went there he said uh netflix and chill so we went there we watched and so on we watched youtube we watched netflix but during sex this guy was really weird and the, some of the things he was doing during sex um we had for lack of a better word guys don't say at any matter people's uh, fetishes we are really not but it, he wanted me to do some things which are just like weird to me as a straight person who is look who was looking for a straight man that will not offend him and then I'll come back here in episode in another episode to give you guys the whole tea but anyway if i feel if i felt unsafe i will psh. another one if they wanted something serious i would psh. at that time if i wanted something casual with someone and then we started off amazingly and then along the way they tell me that they want something serious psh, i just disappear because that's not what i wanted I'll stick to what I wanted and no one is going to you know manipulate me into entering into something I didn't uh, want with them because uh, someone I choose for something casual cannot be the same person I would have chosen if I wanted something serious there's a tiny bit uh, difference a lot of difference actually if someone would touch on my boundaries I wouldn't even give them a second chance i will communicate and tell them this is not what i expected from you because from the beginning i clearly told you that this is what i wanted and this is how i wanted it and you agreed that's the worst part you agreed i gave you a chance to say whether or not this works for you and you said it works for you and now you are crossing my boundaries so no thank you now i've been talking about boundaries 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 what are some of the boundaries that i had when i was single but sexually active with someone who was neither my boyfriend or my husband so let's go the sexual activities that are off limits guys some men will some men would want to take advantage of you and maybe I should have started also by talking about this but when i was making my small notes i didn't think about it 
because there are certain men you can't be in a casual thing with them. You need to find a man at your level who knows what you already know. That way, this thing should be fun. It should be something you are just experimenting and having fun and getting to know people and all that. Some of the sexual activities that were off limits with me were having sex. I've never had that in my life. I will never. It's not one of my fetishes. It's not one of my th the things I enjoy. For someone, we were having a casual, only a casual sexual relationship with, kissing was also off limits. Everyone has that sexual activity that's very intimate to them. And for me, kissing is one of those. And many others that I may not mention here. But I just want you to know that if you are in this situation, you need to have boundaries about what sexual activities are off limits for you and also if that other person have their limits it's very important that you also follow that if they don't want to do something for you that's their boundary respect it or leave if you think that them not being able to do something for you something uh, that's sexual for you is not serving you you are expected to leave because they are not satisfying you sexually you'll find someone else who can do that for you for sure another one of my boundary was using protection there is the issue of taking contraceptives and there is the issue of being infected number three my personal space i needed that someone respect my personal space when are we meeting when are we never meeting? At what time? At what time are you texting me? I don't want someone to be on my case every single time. We are not in a relationship. We're not trying to work on this to turn into something too serious. Yes, we chat and all that. I mean, you're having sex with someone. So there's that level of friendship and connection. However, I have my work to do. I'm not trying to work on this thing. You know, if I'm in a relationship, I would want that communication to be, you know, I'm putting in so much work, I'm sacrificing and compromising because I want this to work and work very, very well. But something casual, I truly don't want to put my much time in it. Last but not least, consent. I would never have allowed someone to do something to me if the answer was no. Like um, this guy that we used to have coffee with, we would not touch in public. We would not touch in public. Having something casual. So even if we are going for those coffee dates and all that, we are just friends. So you cannot be touchy-touchy with me in public, PDA and stuff. Take care of your sexual health. If you're someone who loves to shave, wax, and be very clean, take very, very, very good care of your vagina. Smell nicely. If you love doing vaginal steaming or yoni, do it. Go for those checkups. Just be a decent woman. Just be a decent person, you know? Just be, just love yourself and love your your sex organs and adore it just be clean and proud of, of it you know guys enjoy sex if you truly have decided that you are not celibate you are single and you are having casual sex then enjoy sex otherwise just be celibate if you are not going to enjoy sex just be celibate. Actually, as women, like I was saying before, we have been lied to that we are simply giving sex to men. The day when I did some self-work and uh, discovered that I can actually enjoy sex when I want to, everything changed. Now, I only have sex when I want to, and it has to be how I want it. And I'll also correspond. Is there a way you want it? Can I do it? Then yes. 
I want to have a good, fun sexual life. Focus on the pleasure that sex offers you. I truly don't want to be a sex doctor or whatever. I'm, tr I'm obviously not an expert. I am the most basic person. Okay, so I truly don't want to talk about this deep, but because I'm already talking about this topic, it's only fair that uh, I know this is going to help someone. Experiment if you're comfortable doing it. There are things that are off limits, but there are things that you would love to experiment. Do that. Go on and experiment it. As long as it's not going to hurt you, then it's okay to experiment. Don't just be there. You don't want to experiment anything. There's so much into sex than what we only know. And it's only fair that we enjoy sex. And the only way we can enjoy sex is by experimenting. That way you might just discover what you like about sex that you didn't know. Communicate. For you to enjoy sex, then you have to communicate. What do you love more? What is it that your partner is doing that you feel like you truly, truly enjoy a lot? Focus on that so that you can get even more pleasure. Focus on that thing that they're doing that, you know, takes you to cloud nine or whatever. Focus on that so that you can truly enjoy that as you experiment the others. What is it that they are doing that you really don't feel like it's helping? Communicate, tell them. I think we can just leave this out next time you're having sex. Let's focus on this. And vice versa. The same way you want to enjoy sex is the same way your partner wants to enjoy sex. And if you learn more about sex and how, how, how sex is meant to give us fun, then you will know that there is some level of uh, satisfaction that you get from also making your partner happy it's never just about you sex can only be done by two people so the same way you want to be happy you have to make your partner happy during sex you know guys i realized that i was a, i was someone who used to want a lot of things but never communicated and i told you guys that, that last year i was in and out of three relationships and it's because i wanted things and I didn't say that I wanted them. And I still blamed someone for not doing it for me. And not everyone will do things without being told. So communicate exactly what, I, what you want. And then um, I did some work in myself. And now I just say what I want. If this is what I want, I just put it very clear. This is how I want to be treated. So that when someone doesn't do... Um, doesn't treat me the way I want to be treated, I'll be like, okay, they just don't want because I told them and they're not doing it. It even leaves you with a very clear conscience. You get it? Yeah. Let's talk about body count. You know, I wouldn't have talked about this whole thing without talking about body count because I know how much of a deal is it is to many of you watching this. I know from the beginning, there are people who've been asking themselves, why, Nasasa body count, Nasasa body count, Nasasa body count. But we have to acknowledge that there is a big stigma around this um, body count issue. Let's acknowledge that first. The only thing I'm going to tell you guys, the one and only, is that the decision of whether or not you want to be concerned about body count issues is in your hands. However, what and only thing I would want to tell you is for you to prioritize your safety. And while I say this, I want you to remember that point I attached to prioritizing safety, which was one sexual partner at a go. And with that, guys, let's wait for episode three of my Finding Love series. I can't wait for us to continue going until when I finally found love. I truly pray and hope that by then the love will still be there because I have this trauma after a long time of being single. I truly have this trauma whereby I'm always thinking, oh my God, I hope this is going to last and all that, but I'm really working on that i'll be okay but let me see you in episode three no four 
let me see in episode four guys the series is gonna be very educative um as i tell you my story i'm also going to be entertaining you know i have to entertain you educate you inspire you just whatever whatever works for you you just take it so let me see in the next episode guys thank you so much for being here besties i love you so much Mwah. Thank <laughs> you.